China has long been home to more than half of the world's Bitcoin miners. But last month, the government called for a severe crackdown on mining and trading, leaving the hordes of crypto enthusiasts in the country looking for somewhere else to go. And that somewhere else could be the continental United States. Texas is an ideal destination for miners thanks to its unregulated energy market. But Miami, Florida is also throwing its hat in the ring. The mayor wants to lure the crypto community to his city, and he's willing to offer incentives to make it happen. Our own Mackenzie Segalos is down in Miami and spoke with Mayor Suarez. Right now, the Bitcoin network is undergoing a major overhaul. More than half the world's miners are essentially being kicked out of China, and they're looking for a new home. Remember, Bitcoin miners are totally location agnostic, so they can go anywhere. I'm hearing that one popular destination is China's next door neighbor, Kazakhstan, with its cheap and abundant coal supply. But the United States could also see a major influx of migrant miners. I spoke to the mayor of Miami, who's looking to draw in Chinese miners with the promise of cheap and clean nuclear power. We know that a lot of mining happens in coal producing countries. Uh, like Russia and China. Uh, we think that this is a strategic disadvantage for the United States. And we think the United States and, and Miami, of course, uh, being one of the major cities and the one that we want to define as a crypto hub, uh, have a unique opportunity. The fact that we have nuclear power means that it's very inexpensive power. Um, it's cleaner power, or it's the cleanest form of power other than solar and wind. So we want to make sure that our uh, city has an opportunity to compete. So we're looking at a variety of different incentives that we might be able to create. Wyoming has also trended toward being pro-Bitcoin. Ed Texas has been rolling out the red carpet to miners as well. Despite a lack of reserves that caused blackouts this winter, Texas often has some of the world's lowest energy prices, and its share of renewables is growing over time. Texas has a deregulated power grid, and crucially, its political leaders are very pro-crypto. Ultimately, what miners care about is finding the cheapest source of power out there, and nowadays, that tends to be renewable energy. Depending on where they end up, this could fundamentally reshape the debate about Bitcoin being bad for the environment. If all those miners head to places with renewable energy sources, we could see Bitcoin's carbon footprint shrink. All right, here's a good one, you know, for all my traders and financial guys. And this is something I've been telling you about Bitcoin for hell forever, for the last soon the insecure start. Uh, Four or five years, I do believe. China's Bitcoin miner exodus. China's kicking out more than half of the world's Bitcoin miners, and a whole lot of them could be headed to Texas. China has long been home to more than half of the world's Bitcoin miners, but now Beijing wants them out ASAP. In May, the government called for a severe crackdown on Bitcoin mining and trading, setting off what could be dubbed as a, in crypto circles as the Great Mining Migration. This exodus is underway now and it could be a game changer for texas that's gonna be real interesting bitcoin mining in texas and underneath the united states it's gonna be fascinating mining is the energy intensive process which both creates new coins and maintains a log of all transaction of existing digital tokens despite a lack of reserves that caused days-long blackouts last winter Texas often has some of the world's lowest energy prices, and its share of renewables is growing over time, with 20% of its power coming from the wind as of 2019. It has a deregulated, deregulated power grid that lets customers choose between power providers, and crucially, its political leaders are very pro-crypto. Dream conditions for a miner looking for kind, welcome, and cheap energy sources. You're going to see a dramatic shift over the next few months, said Brandon. Brandon Arvanagi, previously a security engineer at crypto exchange Gemini. We have governors like Greg Abbott in Texas who are promoting mining. It's going to be a real industry in the United States, which is going to be incredible. <laughs> Why does Bitcoin use so much energy? 2021 data for a global distribution of mining power is not yet available but past estimates have shown that 65 to 75 percent of the world's bitcoin mining happened in china i told you that mostly in four chinese provinces xinjiang inner mongolia sichuan and yunnan sichuan and yunnan's hydropower make them renewable energy meccas like xinjiang xinjiang and inner mongolia are home to many of china's coal plants 
The drawdown in minus has already begun in Inner Mongolia after failing to meet Beijing's climate targets. Province leaders decided to give Bitcoin miners two months to clear out, explicitly blaming its energy misses in on crypto mining. Castle Island Ventures founding partner Nick Carter says that while it's, it's not totally clear how China will handle next steps, a phased rollout is likely. It seems that we're going from policy statement to actual implementation in relatively short order, he said. The way this exodus is measured is by looking at the hash rate, an industry term used to describe the computing power of all miners in the Bitcoin network. Given the drop in hash rate, it appears that installations are being turned off throughout the country, continued Carter, who also thinks that probably 50 to 60 percent of Bitcoin's entire hash rate will ultimately leave China. Although China's announcement hasn't been cemented in policy, that isn't stopping miners like Alejandro de la Toro from cutting their losses and making an exit. Wow, okay. We do not want to face every single year some sort of new man coming in China, said De La Torre, vice president of Hong Kong headquartered mining pooling. So we're trying to diversify our global mining hash rate, and that's why we're moving to the United States and to Canada. Interesting. One of Bitcoin's greatest features is that it is totally location agnostic. Miners only require an internet connection, unlike other industries that must be relatively close to their end users. The cool thing about Bitcoin is that it's underappreciated by lots of naysayers that it's a portable market. You can bring it right to the source of energy, said Steve Barber, founder of Upstream Data, a company that manufactures and supplies portable, portable mining solutions for oil and gas facilities. That said, Exodus won't be instantaneous in part because it will take the miners some time to either move their machines out of China or liquidate their assets and set up shop somewhere else. Because miners at scale compete at a low margin industry where their only variable cost is typically energy, they are incentivized to migrate to the world's cheapest sources of power. Every Western mining host I know of has had their phones ring off the hook, said Carter. Chinese miners or miners that were domiciled in China are looking to Central Asia, Eastern Europe, and the U U.S. and Northern Europe. One likely destination is China's next-door neighbor, Kazakhstan. The country's coal mines provide cheap and abundant energy supply, and it also helps that Kazakhstan has a more lax attitude about building, which bodes well for miners who need to construct physical installations in a short period of time. Didar Bakov runs Exiv, a company that provides hosting services to international miners. Exiv also sells specialized equipment needed for mining. Beck says that he stopped counting the number of Chinese miners who have called him to ask about relocation options ranging from operations with 15 rigs to thousands. One miner told us that the only government electricity plants have restricted mining. The private ones will continue to serve as miners, Beck said. Well, most of the electricity is generated by government power plants, so miners will have to move. That makes them uncertain and desperate to find other locations. Where the Kazakhstan is a destination of simply a stopover on a longer migration, West remains to be seen. Avernagy is bullish on North America and sees and thinks the hash rate will, will grow over the next few months. Texas not only has the cheapest, any, cheapest electricity in the U.S., but some of the cheapest on the globe, he said. It's also very easy to start up a mining company. If you have $30 million, $40 million, you can be a premier miner in the United States. Wyoming well, has also trended toward being pro-Bitcoin and could be another mining destination according to Vanagi. There are, however, a few uh, major limitations to the U.S. becoming a global mining destination. For one, the lead time to build the actual physical infrastructure necessary to host miners is likely Six to nine months, hmm, Carter told the CSMC. The U.S. probably can't be as nimble as other countries in terms of onshoring these stray miners, he said. The move logistics could prove difficult. There is a shipping container shortage thanks to the tailwinds of the COVID pandemic. But perhaps the biggest question is the reliability of the Texas power grid, a storm that devastated the large swaths of the state in 2021 has reignited a debate over whether Texas should winterproof its systems. It potentially costs this project that might affect taxes or other fees 
for those looking to tap into the state's power grid. More recently, ERCOT, the organization that operates Texas's grid, asked consumers to conserve energy amid what officials call an unusual number of forced generation outages and an upcoming heat wave. Skipping down. Next six months, for, for the time being, there isn't much mining capacity worldwide that is ready to absorb the Chinese miner diaspora. While they scramble to find a new home, we could see hash rates go offline and stay offline. In practice, that would mean all the remaining miners are more profitable for a period of time. Having more geographic dispersion would even out the global balance of power, and it would also reduce the ability of any one sovereign nation to co-opt or control the network, which is true. We may also see the special crypto economic zones pop up in the next few months. You will see jurisdictions adopting a very fa favorable stance and creating the equivalent of special zones to encourage miners to host locally, said Carter. We're seeing that at the state level here too. You're also going to see it at the country level. You might even see subsidized electricity for mining. I remember I told you that the Chinese control what is, as it says, 75% of the Bitcoin market. So when the Chinese government decides to do something, guess what happens? That's why you had a crash. I do believe uh, China's kicking out the Bitcoin miners because China's uh, uh, UN is getting ready to go digital. So they're basically done with what they've decided to do with Bitcoin. So most of the miners are probably going to have to go. That's probably that's probably what you're going to see. Now, will they move to the United States? In the United States, ex well, they're going to accept them. The thing is, is that under what cost? Because unless the banks have completely accepted Bitcoin as an entity, it won't be the same. The same as the harsh crackdown as, as China does, uh, as far as the uh, CCP making money. So it won't be as expressly controlled as it has been over the, I would say the past, what, since 2012. Because you had downturns were expressly controlled, I mean, my belief, by the, by the Chinese government. Okay. They took profit. You know, they they can be just as big a capitalist as the United States can. Trust and believe the banks take profit here too. So it is what it is. But the thing is, is that Bitcoin is really sensitive to the movements and the and the disposition of the Chinese. Uh, maybe Bitcoin will see an explosion when it gets here or it might be more tightly controlled. We don't know. But for the time being, I told you, I told you, I told you about uh, Chinese Bitcoin mining. In fact, I have a friend of mine. I told her that it had nothing to do with Elon Musk. It has everything to do with the Chinese. And when the Chinese government gets ready to crack down on something, especially something like this, they don't have to go to the court. They don't have to get a warrant. They have to do nothing. All you got to do is come in, walk in, you know, with the Chinese officials and shut, shut it down. If you don't like that, here come the guys with the AK-47 strapped to their, uh, you know, to their arm, to their shoulders. So I told you, if the Bitcoin miners got to go, that's your confirmation that the Chinese were probably in on their last downturn. So there's technical which it happens immediately and it's fundamental which you happen at what you see happen after the fact but once you see it one time the next time it happens you can kind of get a peek into what they're doing but anyway that with that i'm gonna jump off here this is bgs out and i'll see you guys on the next one peace